Hi, I'm Shar, and welcome to another episode of My Moa Inscripted. Today I'm going to talk about how to bend cutaway sides. Uh, I've got my cutaway profile here, and I'm setting up my bending jig. So uh, you can see this is the, the side profile of our cutaway. So for the tenor, uh, I'm going to put that into the jig here. And I also have, now because there are two bends on this side, I've got the jig already has the waist uh, ram that's going to make that part of the curve. I've got to use another ram to make the cutaway um, side here work. So I'm just going to get my second ram onto my jig here. Secure that. set up should work fine now I have, here are the sides that are going to be bent set of koa I've, I'm going to open these and show you they've already been profiled so now because we have um, a different shape on the cutaway side the profile is slightly different for each of the two sides so if I open this I'm going to see that one side is shorter than the other that is the cutaway side because the longer non-cutaway side has to now accommodate the entire neck block. So I'm going to set this one aside and bend it the normal way, which you've already seen. And this is my cutaway side. So one thing that I have to do on the cutaway to accommodate that super tight bend is I have to make this thickness a little, a little shallower. So normally it thicknesses to 85 thousandths. I'm going to take this down to 80 thousandths and then we'll pick back up from there. Hi, I'm back. I have taken a little bit off of this side that we're going to bend for the cutaway. I've matched up, gotten some binding pieces. This koa is going to get some maple binding. I bend these together so the curves are the same. You'll see that I've also applied some masking tape on the piece binding pieces and the side in the tightest part of the curves of the bend so that I can um, alleviate some of the proneness that this has to grain lifting. So now, um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that when these sides get profiled, the center of the waist gets marked, and I have that lined up here on my uh, metal pieces so that when I put those into the bending form, I can line that up. And the goal is to get the ends at the tail of the instrument to match up so I have a beautiful book match so you can see the darker areas. So I want that to match up. and. That uh, waist mark is, is key to getting that to happen. Now what I'm going to do is spritz these sides and the uh, binding pieces with water. I'm going to let those rest for 10 minutes and let that soak in, and then I'm going to bend it. So I'll spritz it now, and I'm going to go ahead and sandwich it between my pieces of metal spring steel. I don't overly soak it or anything. I just give it a nice uh, spritz. I'm going to line it back up with my waist. Do the same with the binding pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to let that soak in. I'll go ahead and put it in the form so that it's ready to go when my timer goes off. So I'm going to line this up here. I've got my waist marked right here. Get my heating blanket. I also have a waste mark on my heating blanket. And I'm going to put that into the form, into the jig here. There we go. Easy does it. There's my waste mark right there. Just Push that down enough to hold it in. And then I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not gonna turn on the heating blanket yet. I'm just gonna get the whole thing set up. So put my thermometer in. Then I clamp it all together, very important. 
so that I get even heating when I do turn it on. Just to give that a little bit more of a push. And I've got my clamp down here ready to go. I'm going to set a 10 minute timer. And when this timer goes off, we'll come back and go ahead and do the bend. Hi, I'm back. My timer just went off, so it's been 10 minutes. Uh, the wood has been soaking. So I'm going to turn my uh, heating blanket on. And I've got, you know, my little thermostat here, my little uh, thermometer reading. So it's going to take, you know, probably five minutes for it to heat up to 230 degrees is where I'm going to take this to. So uh, I'll be back to you in about five minutes when this is ready. Okay, we're back for a minute here. My thermometer is going off because I have set it at 212 degrees. As I said before, I'm going to actually take it to 230. So I just want to be here right when it hits 230. It's, uh, it's going to take a, a few more seconds to get there. It's at 222 right now. So uh, when, I, when it gets to 230, the first thing I'm going to do is bend the waist. I'm just watching there. And then I'm going to do this tightest part of the bend before I do the, uh, the, the lower part. So now I'm at 230. I'm going to turn this down to, you know, about half heat so that it doesn't keep going. And I'm going to remove my thermometer so that it doesn't beep at me again. Uh, so as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is bend the waist. So I just slowly that down. Now the ram for the cutaway actually kind of started falling forward, but I like that because it's just very gently going to start introducing that curve. So I'm okay with that. My clamp stopped it anyway. So now I just start applying the pressure from the cutaway part ram here. And I just kind of ease it Ease it in, gently, slowly. Hold my breath a little bit. No. Good. Just kind of let it rest a bit. I'm going very slowly because I don't want to crack the side. I don't want to crack the binding. I'm just very easily and gently introducing this pretty severe curve. videographer. <laughs> okay, I don't super tighten this down. I just, you can see it's actually matching the curve very well. I'm using a metal uh, tool here just to, so that this doesn't cup on me. Feel pretty good about that. And then this lower bout is uh, easy happy and then I am going to clamp to pull that in at the tail so I get a good I don't get a flare out at the end and there we go now the curve is uh, bent the side is bent I'm going to let this rest an entire 24 hours so that it takes this, this shape and keeps it. And we'll come back tomorrow morning, take this out, and you can see um, the result. Thanks. Hi, we're back and it's time to take the side out of the bender. And before we do that, I just want a, to disclaim that I would, I would never wear this scarf in the shop because it's very dangerous. It could get caught in a piece of equipment, but we're not gonna be using any kind of uh, motorized equipment. So, and we're on our way somewhere, so it, that's what that's about. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this. First thing I do is take the clamps off that are pulling in the tail piece. And then Gordon is gonna come around and he has to hold down the tail so that the spring steel doesn't pop up and crack the sides. So the lower the lower piece right here, I'm holding this down so that it doesn't pull up on the side. Ready? Yep. Yeah. And then we're just going to remove the 
rams at the same time. Exciting. Yep. Remove the tape here and make sure that everything turned out the way we wanted. Looks good. It's just like right along the curl there. That's just the glue from the the uh, piece of tape. So everything looks really good. We got two beautifully tight curves there. And that's how you bend a cutaway side. Thanks.